I have for you today is sort of a somewhat un, uh, unstructured set of slides talking about some issues doing lightning on liquid um, and more generally doing cross-chain stuff with liquid. So um, thank you, Brock, for, uh, for well, A, for building all that stuff. That's incredibly cool. It's much, it's much more involved than anything I've built on liquid. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, you go ahead. All right. yeah. Um, so yeah, so let me start by just briefly explaining what Liquid is, although I think both, both of the other talks have talked about this a bit, and Brock gave a bit of an introduction. Can we hit F11 or something? Do you know how to make this full screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's change that. Go ahead. I'm going to give this a shot. Thanks, Bob. Does anyone see that? All right, it's fine. OK, um, so Liquid is a sidechain. Sidechain means you've got a separate blockchain. You can move Bitcoin onto it and off of it. Um, we'll probably hear more about sidechains when, when we talk about RSK uh, later on. But, uh, but Liquid for sidechain purposes is not that exciting. It's a, it's a federated sidechain, meaning that the PIG is maintained by a federation of signers. So when you move coins onto the system, you're moving them into custody of this 11 of 15 consortium, this 11 of 15 check multi six script on Bitcoin. When you move coins out, you are basically requesting that the consortium give you your coins back or give you some coins back. All of this is publicly verifiable, um, but it's not trustless. It, it's a federated trust model in the sense that if 11 of the 15 consortium members were to try to abscond with the funds, and if they were to um, break the HSMs that we ship to them, uh, they could they could do that. So. So yeah, so that, that's Liquid as a sidechain. I'm going to talk about Liquid as a platform or as a blockchain for the most part today. Um, so Liquid, um, it has multiple assets. It has a bunch of script opcodes. It has a few other things, CT, I guess. But uh, probably the script opcodes are the most interesting for the purpose of this talk. So Liquid historically actually has, has kind of led Bitcoin. Brock hinted at this. There's a bunch of new opcodes and stuff. Um, Liquid had op CSV before Bitcoin did. That's the time lock opcode. Liquid had SegWit actually before Bitcoin did, or the precursor to Liquid, I should say, was this test network called Elements Alpha that had a version of SegWit. We later moved that to Bitcoin. It was, you know, largely rewritten and restructured, and then we, we pulled the Bitcoin version back into Liquid. So that was that was kind of cool. Um, we are pretty confident we're going to have Sighash any prev out or Sighash no input before Bitcoin does. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that. We are racing to get Taproot in before Bitcoin, which is a bit ironic because Taproot was developed by um, originally by Peter Woola and Greg Maxwell and myself, who are, uh, are all blockstream, or at the time were all blockstream people working on Liquid, but uh, and then Bitcoin got ahead of us, which is good news uh, for the ecosystem and bad news for my ego. So, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll beat it. We've got till November, I think. We can, we can, we can do it. Uh, the moral, though, is that Liquid's kind of open to pulling in new opcodes, new, new proposals and stuff. Uh, so if you have ideas for Bitcoin, you think you don't want to go through the Bitcoin consensus project or process, you want to like, move forward earlier, uh, you can probably contact us. You know, we're, we're pretty open to, to pulling stuff off. So let's get into uh, to the meetups. So why, why is this interesting? Well, so we'll have Shar on the same time frame as Bitcoin. That's not what I'm saying. We're, we're, we'll beat them. But it, it, it'll be this year for both Bitcoin and Liquid. Uh, this means we can do swaps using scriptless scripts. So for those of you who are, are familiar with scriptless scripts, the, the premise basically is that if you have Schnorr multi-signatures, you can do a sort of HGLC-style atomic swap, where instead of exchanging a hash pre-image, you can actually modify the Schnorr multi-signature protocol so that you kind of embed a hash pre-image in your partial signatures. And that way, you have two parties creating signatures on two blockchains. And when the signatures are completed on each chain, there's actually an atomicity that happens, where the completion of signatures on one chain reveals a secret that can be used to complete signatures on the other chain. And if you're not familiar with that, that was probably a whole bunch of gibberish. But it's very cool. The result is basically that you can do atomic swap type things uh, in the same security model as like hash-based atomic swaps, but the blockchain fingerprint is, is null. And then also, if you're, you're chaining multiple each DLC off of each other, you can like reblind stuff and, and you can improve privacy in that way. Um, the cool thing, so so one one thing that kind of plagues atomic swap, um, no matter the technology, plagues atomic swap designs is this so-called free option issue. Free option problem, I guess. Where if you are moving between blockchains that have different assets, they have different valuations, they have floating exchange rates, 
then when you start this multi-party protocol before everyone's time blocks are up, then if the exchange rate fluctuates, one party might have an incentive to kind of go offline. Or to go offline and then wait until the price moves in their favor and then come back online and complete the protocol and stuff like that. The nice thing about Liquid is Liquid has a peg to Bitcoin. It's one to one peg. So there's no free option issue. Like you can have a, a, a swap protocol that takes a, a little or as much time as you want and it's still going to work. But on the other hand, on Liquid itself, you have multiple assets. So we have the LBTC peg, of course. Um, we have Tether, which is like directly Tether, you know, trust Bitfinex. You, you can trust L, L Tether as much as you trust any Tether. Um, in principle, anybody could do, could do a, uh, a peg if they wanted. You could add a Monero peg if you could cobble together a federation or if you're just one guy who people trust for some reason. Uh, you're welcome to do this. I, uh, I mean, personally, I would not for regulatory exposure reasons, but I live in the United States. I'm a U.S. person, and they tend to, you tend to go to jail for political crimes when you, when you deploy stuff like that. But if you're not concerned about that, like, you could deploy in a Monero swap on Liquid. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, and that leads me into... So, using the PIG and the absence of these free option issues, as I said, you can do swaps easily on, uh, on Liquid. Uh, so the generalization of doing swaps between Bitcoin and Liquid is to have payment channels on Liquid that are connected to payment channels on Bitcoin, and now you can have lightning payment path that goes through Liquid. And kind of a cool idea that, you know, I don't have enough time, so you can talk to me, talk to me afterwards, and we'll see if I remember. Um, the cool idea, uh, another cool idea, if you have payment channels on Liquid, then you can start using all the tech things on Liquid. So in particular, if we can get any prep out on Liquid, and we've gotten a, a lot of pressure from people in the ecosystem to deploy this basically as soon as it, right after Tapper, we're gonna try to get any prep out going. With any prep out, you can start doing L2 or, or some of the other uh, new Liquid designs, or, or new Lightning designs, where you have constant size state backups, where rather than having this linearly growing backup set, when you're doing state updates, you just have this constant size which is a major scalability issue in Lightning today, probably the scalability in Lightning. Um, so right now the Lightning developers are, are really uh, petitioning the Bitcoin community to bring this, this new SIGHASH mode into Bitcoin so that they can, they can redesign their system. Um, so today we can sort of emulate this with, with Kat and Chexic from Stack. And by sort of, I mean I'm, Christian Decker thinks we can, and I think we can, but neither of us want to work through the details. Um, tomorrow we'll, we'll just, and tomorrow means sometime, you know, uh, we'll, just, we'll just actually implement it. Um, a bit later on, we will deploy Simplicity, and the timeline for that is actually pretty close, like within, within the next 12 months, I'd say. I, I was unwilling to say that at the big conference, but I'm, I'm willing to say it to you guys privately. Um, and that's really exciting, because Simplicity has been like a five year like mega project, um, so it's, it's, I think, surprising to a lot of external observers that is moving forward and like it's going to be a real thing. Um, but with simplicity, then we get every, every SIGHASH mode you can imagine, like you can just implement whatever SIGHASH modes that you want, and that gives us a lot of freedom uh, to experiment with new things. And so, you can maybe go to the next slide. Um, do you want to talk about this? I probably, how much time do I have? Like two minutes? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's go to the next slide. Um, next one. <laughs> Is that the end? That is the end. Okay, you can go back on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so what I what I was going to say? Oh, here this this last point is what I want. This should get us on this on uh, on slide, um, which is that we have a lot of room for experimentation with payment channels on Liquid. And so to, what I mentioned in, in these first couple bullet points is that kind of the obvious thing that you might want to do, like try to get confidential transactions to work with Liquid, or try to get multiple assets to work with Liquid or with Lightning. Sorry. Um, if you try to directly use all the liquid features that you kind of want to use with Lightning, then you run into the, some design issues that are a little bit tricky. But on the other hand, the sort of non-obvious improvement to Lightning you could do on Liquid is to use these new opcodes, meaning like right now you can maybe kind of gin something up with our existing opcodes. Once we have any Prevo, you can use that. When we get Taproot, um, very soon, I, I understand it's blocking you, so we'll, we'll do it. Um, I'll do it. I would be doing it right now, actually, but I have to do this. Um, we appreciate you. 
Um, and, and you know, sooner than later, we'll have simplicity. So we have a lot of room to iterate on different HTLC designs and different things. And the cool thing here is that using scriptless scripts, and even probably using hash images, kind of the connection between different payment channels is really like loosely coupled. Kind of the same cool fact that lets you have payment channels on Bitcoin connected to payment channels on Liquid, also lets you have payment channels that are completely structured differently from each other connected to each other. Because the connection is this exchange of hash image, or in the case of scriptless scripts, it's the exchange of this, this so-called adaptive signature. So while there's maybe a, uh, uh, a lot of hesitancy in the Lightning community to trying to deploy cool new HDLC designs using like new technology, because of the pace of innovation and because how large and established and, and the, the difficulty in creating standards for Lightning, the cool thing about Liquid is that it gives you a platform to do experimentation on where you can basically hook directly into the Lightning Network provided that you know you can find like one other person to have a payment channel with you on Liquid and then you should be able to hook those directly into, into Lightning, into existing payment paths. So I'm going to close there, I'm out of time. Um, I'm happy to take questions and I'll be around um, for a bit. Like you guys are, are welcome to come bug me and ask me things and stuff. So, thanks. Any questions about the presentation or anything? Yeah. For the, the free option less swaps, is that only where the block where each chain has strong signatures being included, right? No, that's actually an, an economic thing. It's just where each chain has the same asset. So if you're moving like Bitcoin on Bitcoin, Bitcoin on Liquid, or Bitcoin on RSK, or Bitcoin on, on the Ethereum, contract. All of those avoid the free option issue because the value of Bitcoin is the same or very close to the same yeah. on all of those. Where the free option issue occurs is when you're trying to do like a swap between Bitcoin and Monero, say, where there's a floating exchange rate that can change during the protocol. Right, right. right. So I understand that. When, so you're saying that you know this upgrade will provide you know an HTLC-like swap without the free option? No, no, we still, we have exactly the same, like the zooming out a bit, we have kind of the same structure okay. where, you, where both people have to put coins into a multi-sig, there's this claim or refund period where like maybe there's a timeout and, and somebody can do a hold up. Um, the only way to do like atomic, like single transaction atomic swap is if you're on the same chain with different assets. And I sort of, I sort of muddy those, but that's, that's kind of trivial and, and not so interesting, right? 